and welcome to the Everett Silver Show. We have excited guests as we do every week. And so I want to thank you so much for tuning in. And I'm always bringing it to you. So thanks so much for staying in tune with us. Stay connected. You're watching the Everett Silver Show. Excuse me. Can I help you? I'm Ginger Thompson. I'm looking for Thelma Garcia. Miss Thompson? Yes, I'm a journalist with ProPublica. We're investigating one of the stories involving one of her clients. I'm Thelma. Oh, come. I want to uh, hug you. Oh, okay. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for all you've done. Come, sit. Sit. Do you want any coffee? Can I get you anything? No, no I'm Are good. you sure? Yes, I'm sure. Thank you. <gasps> It's nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. How long have you been involved in immigration law? Mm. 28 years. Mm. Never seen anything like what's going on now. Yeah, neither have I. According to my research, it's 2,300 kids across 17 states been separated from their parents since zero tolerance policy has begun. It's unthinkable. Yeah. Mm. I've been speaking with Cindy's sister, Mariana, and actually, I'm scheduled to speak with her in about an hour. I mean, I'm supposed to call. I have an idea. Come. Hello, Everett, is it? Hey, Judy. Yes, it is Everett. How you doing? Thanks so much for uh, doing the show today. It's a pleasure. Thank you so much for having me. Well, folks, I have the wonderful privilege uh, of talking to uh, well, the star of Torn from the Arm. And you've got to make sure, uh, man, I'm telling you, based on the true story, uh, it's just one that you got to get into. The knife, new Lifeline movie uh, kind of tells us the true story of a mother and a young daughter. And I have the star, uh, you remember, uh, Devious Maids. I have Judy Reyes is here with us. Judy, talk about uh, Thelma Garcia in this particular uh, series. Uh, it's a Lifetime TV movie that premieres on Saturday night at 8 p.m. It's called Torn From Her Arms. It's about a mother and daughter who uh, were caught at the border and were torn apart once they were um, uh, housed or arrested. Um, one, the mother was in one state, the daughter was in another. Uh, and someone uh, leaked a tape of the child screaming and longing for her mother. And uh, a huge story uh, was made of it. And the attorney, an immigration, a well-known immigration uh, attorney from Texas named Thelma Garcia, took on the case um, to realize the reunification of this mother and child. And I yeah, told and Judy, you, you know, I'm sorry, I said I play the attorney. Yeah, no, go ahead, go ahead. You play the attorney, uh huh? No, that's all. That's all. I said mother by but accident. Listen, but but listen, what I was going to say, I mean, you know, how. how relevant is this to our day's time because they've already fleeing from El Salvador for safety to the United States and to come she's only six years old and to 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 being torn from her mother's arm has got to be traumatic a hundred percent you know when I got the script uh, I, I was already a huge follower of the story um, about uh, parents being taken torn from their children after taking the risk of crossing the border I am a Latina I am a mother I'm a first generation American. And uh, right. the one risk that you take leaving your beloved country, because very few people leave their country under said circumstances, unless there was something really terrifying. And if you're not doing it for your child, um, and then to add the trauma of being se forcefully separated from your child, not knowing where they are, not knowing where they took them and not knowing whether or not you're going to see them again. Even now, as I talk about it, it makes me want to cry. So having the opportunity right. to play these, um, and it's about all these wonderful, powerful women, right? Women of color. Ginger Thompson, uh, played by the wonderful Gloria Rubin, uh, uh, was a Pulitzer Prize winning uh, uh, African-American writer who, who, put, who published this story, who put it on the airwaves. If this story hadn't become big, uh, a lot of people in this country wouldn't know what was going on. Um, and that's heartbreaking to me. Um, because it's just, it's unbearably wrong, you know? Yeah, I'm very I got to tell you. About it. I'm gonna talk yeah, about it yeah, for I was going to say, yeah, I got to tell you that, um, you know, looking at the trailer, I mean, there's some, some lines. Uh, you got to gotta give kudos to Lifetime for even doing a story like this. Because even looking at some of the trailers, you, 
you're breaking some barriers of, of, of telling them, listen, they try to give you limitations of what you can do, but you want to bring this out because talk about the living conditions, the inadequate medical care, even at this, the border. I mean, you know, it's just heartbreaking. And uh, 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 wouldn't you say? I, I agree 100%. And then, what you know, the stuff that we actually were able to see um, right. prior uh, to this, uh, I guess, political climate was even very difficult to digest. People and children in cages, um, completely filthy in their own, um, in their own sick, freezing with uh, like these uh, aluminum mylar looking things for blankets. And everybody, particularly the children, agonizing and asking uh, for their parents, even post reunification, that's like a post traumatic stress that uh, both uh, parents and children have to endure and recover from, you know, things that would happen to a child um, and, and, and yeah. being traumatized by the experience and how they would hold a parent uh, responsible, you know. Um, so I'm really, uh, and uh, kudos to Lifetime indeed, because they are taking the initiative to pull stories from the headlines and bring them and dramatize them in the sense that, that the, the audience can respond to, you know, and perhaps investigate it further, which is what I look forward to. And, and Julie, I heard you when you say, uh, this is kind of close to you, you've been following, because you're an American actress, model, also producer. How is this role, uh, I mean, so close to your heart? Because I remember you from Kala and Scrubs, uh, I remember, uh, you know, talk, we talked about devious maids before, but mm -hmm. how is this last question uh, any any different in your role that you played? You know, I was I, I was trained dramatically in the theater, so it feels like um, a little bit rusty out of practice, but a real gift to just kind of return to those roots and um, and and realize as authentically as possible this real person, Thelma Garcia, who is a true hero. Um, I spoke to her on multiple occasions and really got her, her voice, her impression, her, her vision, and her real tireless um, dedication, devotion. This is who she is. So all those things um, really contribute to the choices that you make uh, as a character to be as honest you, as you can to portray and realize the story. Well, I tell you, I'm excited about it, guys. You got to make sure you tune in. Uh, Torn from her arms premieres this Saturday, October the 30th, 8 p.m. on Lifetime. You can catch uh, Thelma Garcia, who's played by Judy uh, Reyes. I'm telling you, immigration lawyer there. It is going to be a wonderful family type event to just watch and, and and see how close it is. And Judy, any last minute things you want to say? What a pleasure to have you on the show. A pleasure to be here. I couldn't have said it be better. Um, give yourself the gift of watching this movie. I think it'll really make an impact and uh, bring back stuff and even um, inspire you, you know? So I appreciate it. Thank you. Judy Reyes, I tell you, thank you so much. Thank you. Well, guys, uh, thanks so much for tuning into the Everett Silver Show. Stay tuned. Don't turn that dial because we got more exciting guests right here on the Everett Silver Show. Be back in a moment. So Jake, are you more of a stabbing kind of guy or a strangulation kind of guy? Because I see the appeal of both. I, I don't know. N neither. I, I don't know if I can do this. Oh, sure you can. Easy. If you want hard, <laughs> try choking someone with these. You hate her, don't you? Of course I hate her. She's definitely got it coming. Yeah, and, and I want her dead. But what, what if I'm not a killer? Everybody's a killer if you push them far enough. Hello, Everett. Hey, Devin. Hey, Zachary. Thank you guys for doing the show. Thank you. Yeah, for of course. Me. Well, I got to tell you, before I start out asking anything, you got to know I, I, I've been Chucky fan since it started, man. It's, <laughs> it's, just, it's just incredible. Well, folks, I, I have the wonderful privilege of talking to uh, Devin Sawa and also Zachary out there. Uh, you got to know your favorite killer doll is back, Chucky, and so we got to talk about what sci-fi is doing. And so um, I guess I'll start with you, uh, Devin. Talk about the show and your character, uh, I, I know uh, Logan. Um, 
this show is uh, is is a continuation and a reboot all at the same time. It's for new fans. It's for old fans. It brings back the old characters. It introduces an absolutely amazing young cast of actors. Um, and uh, I, I'm fortunate enough to play uh, the lead, uh, Zach's uh, father and uncle, uh, both highly flawed uh, twins. And um, it's just, it's a great show that, uh, you know, a lot of people were skeptical of that when, when they heard Chucky was going to be a TV series, but Don Mancini got behind it. And it works so well as a TV show. So that's that's everything in a nutshell from from me as far as character and show and it's just I'm having so much fun with this thing. It's amazing. Now, now Zachary, you know, uh, you know, th this is a different character for you, man. Just to find out this little innocent, you know, dog could be so so detrimental to this little town, right? Oh yeah, man. You know, I mean, it all starts off with you know because Jake's an artist. It all starts off with him going to the yard sale. And seeing Chucky, and instantly he knows what he's going to do with that doll. He's going to use it for its sculpture. But bringing Chucky home is probably the last thing he'd want to do. And you know what? The town gets thrown into chaos, and you know what? It's I'm on for it, man. I'm ready. <laughs> well, talk about because uh, you know a lot of people that may not know. I know I've like I said I've been following. Chucky, man. I remember my, my oldest brother would call me and say, "Man, have you seen that movie?" And I hadn't, and I got into it. You know, but it talks about the Charles Lee Ray, you know, this, you know, I won't really give him much of it, but it kind of brings out his character, right, Devin? And talk about that from that perspective. Now we're going to learn really the history and how this all began, right? Yeah, the beautiful thing about this going to a series is, is we're, we're able to explore this new world with the young kids and, the old, and you know, eventually the old actors coming uh, back. But we also have time to explore the, the Charles, Charles Lee Ray origin story, how how did he get the way he is? Um, what, where, where did it all go wrong? And we kind of explored that through the series, and, and it's it's really kind of um, it, it gave me, uh, it gave me. I never, I mean, I wasn't there during the shooting of it, so when I saw him on screen, it gave me kind of goosebumps to to see such an iconic character. To see, you know, it's like it's 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 a really cool origin story that's going on. It's like the B story of the series, um, and it's a lot of fun to watch. And then uh, um, I guess when you think in terms of Zachary, uh, you know, how, how real is this? Sometimes it comes to the realization that could this actually really be happening? And, you know, I know a lot of people, you know, I'm telling you, I'm glued to the set, man. And I'm telling you, and what a perfect way to, to come out with this show on October, right? Halloween. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's definitely the season for this. But, um, yeah, you know, even, you know, I got to tell you, being on set and seeing how the doll moves, you know, it doesn't make it any better. It's not make it any better. He's <laughs> freaky. I can't tell you how many times I would sit there, like, in a trance, looking into those big blue eyes, those big blue creepy eyes. Man, I can't. They're so freaky, man. It doesn't make it any better. And definitely, you, don't, you do have those moments where you're like, hold on. Is this guy really alive? Is this guy really... Is, is this actually like a real thing? Yeah, no, it's, <laughs> it's freaky, man. <laughs> yeah, they, they also had like, they had this incredible sound system on set surrounding the doll because Brad Dork uh, recorded everything. He pre recorded everything. So it, you had this, like, this surround sound Brad Dork voice coming through on the speaker. <laughs> and these puppeteers would, like, they've been doing this for forever. <laughs> So they've mastered hiding in their little, like they put on their, their black hoodies and their black, and they hide in the shadows and, and they're all, there's like five of them surrounding the And all of a sudden, like Brad Dorf is in surround sound and this Chucky doll is just, <laughs> and they, they stay in character with the old cut. Like, I'll, I'll tell a bad joke and all of a sudden I'll look over at Chucky and he'll turn his head to me like, dude, I'm going to kill you. And, and it's just, it's just <laughs> there's, like, a, there's a lot of bloopers. <laughs> Well, well, well uh, De Devin, it sounds like Zachary was really, you know, terrified of this little guy. Some... <laughs> Zachary, no, man, the voice comes out of nowhere. It comes out of the ceiling. It's like the voice of God, but it's Brad Dillard. Yeah. It's freaky, man. They had, like, well, crystal well, clear BMW surround <laughs> sound bad for us. Well, look, I don't have to ask either one of you then, is this character any different than any other things you played, man, especially, you know, uh, uh, Devin, from you know your background, uh, from what you've had, man, from 
you know, uh, you know, you're playing Chucky now, but I remember Casper, you know, now and then, Little Giants, and and then uh, Zachary, your fifth wave. This got to be different character for both of you. Hey man, yeah. <laughs> Why do people keep bringing up these these? these wild, the wild America, wild America too, Dennis. I worked in my twenties, darn it. <laughs> oh God, it's too funny. <laughs> we just we just had a conversation with somebody, and and Zach's go-to movie for me was Wild America. I was like, what? <laughs> Well, look, guys, I got to tell you, what, what a pleasure to have. We all, we all going to be glued into Chucky, man. I'm telling you, again, uh, make sure you tune in. Uh, I, I know yeah, uh, Tuesday too. it comes on. I, I know it comes on as well. But to, you got to tune in, man. Tuesday is uh, 10 p.m. USA and also Sci-Fi. Any last minute things you guys want to say? It's 96% on, on Rotten Tomatoes. 4.4 million people tuned in to watch the premiere. I, I I would say it's a hit, but that's an understatement. It's gigantic. It's awesome. <laughs> like, you know, I've got other movies besides Wild America. <laughs> Chucky will come after you. I, I love it, man. I'm telling you, well, this Halloween, guys, you, it's already going to be there for us. Chucky, make sure you tune in to Sci-Fi, also USA TV. What a pleasure to have Devin uh, Sawa, also Zachary Arthur. Guys, what a pleasure to have you on the show. <laughs> Thank you, sir. You're quick. Uh, you're welcome, man. Bye-bye. More guests coming your way. Don't touch that dial. I'll be back in a moment. I think you have not paid attention to your football career because you're like, if I take my eyes off of her, something's going to happen. I'm going to lose it. Yeah. And it's caused more problems in our relationship because the financial strain has been 100% on me. And where do you get money? I have a subscription-based thing. Okay, and website. what do you do on your subscription-based? Sexy pictures, oh. like bikini pictures, oh, okay. lingerie pictures. I'm only doing it right now because until I graduate from law school and make my career as a lawyer, mm -hmm. all the women in our family are educated. Every woman works, but the man's still supposed to do that too, you know? Right. But what about this thing about your career and stuff? In real estate. Okay. My fire and drive has always been football. Like I told That's you, that right. Was one track that's what i looked at and what's what i worked for so learning how to make money in other ways it was all new to me right hi everett tracy thank you so much for doing the show thanks for having me what a pleasure to have well folks uh before you say i do there's i guess uh there's a need though to get a yes from the family and i tell you owns got it on family and fiance i have the wonderful privilege of talking to hosts and also relationship coach Tracy McMillan. With that being said, Tracy, how in the world you talk about relationships within itself is uh, is hard enough, but when you add the element of family and trying to get that approval, it's always difficult, right? You know, there are very it, it's uh, families can have a problem with the person we pick to partner with because very often we picked that person in opposition to our family or something we did or did not get in our family. So it's never surprising. That when the families have trouble. You know, I, I was thinking, I, I was going to ask you because of your expertise, because you have an extensive background. I know you're a television writer, relationship expert, and author as well. But when you think in terms of why or do you think uh, the importance of the blessing, though, from the loved ones or family is for, kind of vitally important? Well, because we are having our couplehood needs support, right? Like, mm -hmm. You can't be in a couple and have all this opposition coming at you without that taking a toll on your relationship. Likewise, when you have the support of a loving family and you have the wisdom that elders can offer you and the wisdom and the support that siblings can offer you, um, your couplehood has a lot less strain on it. You have somewhere to go to um, process things and you're not all alone in your relationship. Relationships are stronger when they take place in a, in a solid and supportive family. Oh, uh, awesome, excellent point. Now talk about Tracy, uh, how difficult though is it to have, I guess, to be able to choose though, in some cases, uh, either their fiancés or their family, that, that, that's a hard choice, right? Well, I think you, if you're gonna have a happy marriage, you're gonna have to choose your fiance 
period. Mm -hmm. Now, right. hopefully your family isn't going to force you to, ch to make a choice. Um, sometimes the family wants you to make a choice because they feel like the person you've chosen isn't worthy of you. And if that is the case, you have to sort of um, deeply look into that. Is that true? Does this person not measure up in some basic way? Not like the family doesn't like the clothes they wear, but like the family sees that they can't take care of you economically, for example, or they're not loving enough, or they don't have the emotional skills that it's going to take to really walk through uh, a relationship. When the families have concerns like that, you really need to take their concerns seriously. Sometimes couples are so much in the um, in the honeymoon phase of the relationship, they don't want to hear what their families have to say. Right, right. Yeah, I was thinking sometimes, uh, uh, have you, in your expertise or your, your just being a relationship type coach, have you ever saw anything that maybe jumped out at you that you thought, wow, I, I didn't see that coming? Or sometimes the couples, do they find out maybe they were not meant to get be together? Oh, absolutely. Not every couple. My goal is to lead the couple toward whatever's in the highest good. And very often, I mean, I'll say one third of the time, 20% of the time, something like that. That means breaking up. You know, not wow. every couple has what it takes to go the distance. And you want to find that out before you get married. Absolutely. Again, uh, and then any last minute things you want to say, Tracy, because I know we, we're going to be locked in as we always locked in family and fiance. You know, you can always catch the new episode Saturdays at 10 p.m. on OWN. And then, uh, Tracy, any last minute things you want to say? What a pleasure to have you. Oh, thank you for having me. I think the thing that people need to understand in their couples is that a relationship is a practice of learning how to love another person more and better. It's, there's specific skills that a relationships are about. And if you can learn those skills, your relationship will be so much happier. Wow. What, what an awesome, uh, vital lesson we just learned right then, Tracy. And what, what, again, the privilege to talk to host and relationship coach Tracy McMillan owns family and fiance. Catch it again, Saturday nights, 10 PM on own. Tracy, what a privilege and honor to have you. Thank you for doing the show today. Thanks for having me. You're welcome. Buddy. More guests coming your way. Don't touch that dial. Be back in a moment. Hello, Everett. Hi, Sean. Hey, Jimmy. Thank you guys so much for doing the show. What a pleasure to have you both. We're very happy to be here. Thanks for having us. Well, folks, I tell you, Courage Runs Deep, uh, National Geographic documentary film, The Rescue. And we've got uh, the directors of this, uh, I'm telling enthralling, against all odds story. And I have the wonderful privilege of basically, you know, talking to both the award-winning filmmakers. Um, uh, Sha Vassarelli is with us, also Jimmy Chin. And, and uh, Sha, I start with you. Let's, let's talk about this this documentary that everybody's talking about and um, just the odds and just, just, just talk about The Rescue. Well, The Rescue chronicles this you know, against all odds rescue that transpired in the summer of 2018. And I think like many of us, many of people around the world, we were just transfixed as the story was unfolding, you know, as parents, um, as humans. Because I think if we think back to that summer, it was a tricky time politically in the whole world. And here was a story that showed, you know, reminded us of our common humanity. You had people from all walks of life, different languages, different nations who came together to rescue 13 strangers. So. That's really the, you know, the pulsing heart of the movie. Um, but it's also kind of a thrilling ride to go on. And uh, with that being said, Jimmy, you, you I think a little bit of your background, you've taken some, I mean, you, you are a professional climber, skier, just probably capturing some of the moments of this type of event around this documentary. What was that like for you? Well, you know, we did do some reenactments uh, and Chai and I were there together uh, filming in the UK. And, and really that exercise was hugely important for the film and for us as filmmakers. The, you know, divers came together uh, with us to really demonstrate 
how they did the dives and how they rescued the kids. And it was really important for us that, you know, that the footage was authentic and accurate to what actually happened. So, you know, they demonstrated exactly how they did it and we were able to film it so that people could really get a sense uh, of what happened inside the cave. Uh, and and it, was, it was pretty intense just to see them, you know, getting in the right mindset, in the right mental space, um, handling uh, the kids and, and just where they need to go when they, when they do these kinds of really intense activities. Yeah, I was listening, listening to Jimmy. I mean, he he's talk, yeah, you talk about the severity of this type of rescue being documented because of some of the I don't want to give too much of it away because I do know the rescue is now playing in theaters everywhere, but when you talk about getting the having the efforts of like the likes of a Navy SEAL or some special forces, that was pretty serious. Yes. Um, so the American Special Forces, the PJs, played a very important kind of logistical support role in the rescue, as did the Thai Navy SEALs. And when you actually, you know, I've been to the cave and like when you see, I've walked the whole cave and when you see the sheer scale, you mm. understand why you needed thousands of people to support these 10 hobbyists, you know, the divers who were able to affect the rescue. And, you know, it, it was a chaotic scene and it was hard to gain access to especially the Thai Navy SEALs because we we're making this film during the pandemic so we couldn't meet them in person um, and they also had material that we understood that they had filmed from inside the cave so it, it became like a very long negotiation which you know it was the good fight and, and uh, Jimmy uh, you guys are Academy Award winning directors man and have you was this any, how was this documented any different in other, other work that you've done? Well, we always look for great stories and great characters and, you know, films that have the potential to carry ideas and themes that are universal that can move all audiences. Uh, so in that sense, it's, it's similar, you know, in, in some of the other work that we do it has to be really moving to us though, like these, the, the ideas and the stories and the characters. Uh, I think that in this case, the film strikes even deeper because of the moral courage that the characters show and the decisions that they're making are not just affecting themselves, but, you know, are selfless acts of generosity for other people. And, and, and Shai, congratulations, I know most recently on your free uh, solo, you know, that, that intimate, you know, portrait of another another best doc, kind of documentary that you've done. And, and guys, what, what a pleasure to have you on the show today. Uh, again, folks, to, to talk to the uh, Academy Award winning directors, uh, Shai Vassarelli and also Jimmy Chin. Uh, again, The Rescue can be now viewed everywhere, uh, in theaters everywhere in the world. And guys, thank you so much for doing the show and a pleasure to have you. Yeah, thank you for thank having you us. Sing, get the song.